Hi guys and welcome to another Friday video. Got a little bit of a, a cough thing going on, but I think I'll get through it. I've got some trusty uh, tea with me to get me through. So um, <clears throat> please forgive me if I'm a bit <clears throat> growly at times. Um, had some lovely feedback from last week's video, which was all about starting 2023, 2023 in the studio uh, with back-to-back -back sessions virtually, which is, you know, sometimes when, when things are flowing really well in a perfect world, those things can happen. They just lead on. Same as tours. They can just lead on one after the other. And you don't have to think about anything. The phone goes and everything just falls nicely into place in the calendar. It's very rare, but it does happen. Um, and uh, I got some nice questions about that, that that whole situation in the studio and so on from various some of my students and just some other people that I know who comment on the stuff they see on Instagram. So they'll send me a direct message and so on and so forth. So hopefully um, I'll be hitting uh, all those answers and hitting all those points for you in this. Um, I may have touched on some of it before, but I just thought it might be worth going through. And if I forget anything, please, um, obviously I'll edit this video and look at it, make sure I fit, it, fit everything in. But if I do miss anything, I'll try and add it afterwards. And please, by all means, let me know if you think I've missed anything along the way or said that I was going to talk about it and then didn't get to it. <laughs> so firstly, one of the questions I, I I get a lot anyway at clinics as well is, you know, how, how do you get the work? Because at the end of the day, um, you know, that is the, the main thing. People are very happy to watch you doing this stuff. But it's like, well, how did you get it in the first place? You know, that's well, with a lot of it, I may have answered this before, but a lot of it comes from just the amount of years I've been playing and early on in my career in the early 90s, doing a lot of sessions around Bath and Bristol, sometimes for no money, you know, just for them to buy me lunch or something um, or a couple of beers at the end of the day, just to get my foot in the door. I'm not saying that has to be the way you would want to do it, but certainly that's time for me and my career and in the climate and how everything was with music, it wasn't quite as drastic as it is now. Things were flowing a bit easier, more gigs, you know, things were easier, loads more pubs doing music um, and lots more pubs. A lot of them have closed since lockdown and so on. So that's how I kind of got into it to begin with and met a lot of engineers, producers, obviously musicians. And, uh, you know, if you do one good job at a studio, you leave a card or, that, or give them your phone number, they remember you. So if, if they they need a drummer or something comes up, they say, ha ha, Rob's good, he's local, give him a call. You know, sometimes I'm the, the number one call, sometimes I'll be the number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. But as long as I'm on everyone's list as a, as a call drummer, then, you know, that's all I and you can, can hope for. That's a good thing. And of course, getting in and doing a good job. That's what we're there for. Um, you know, listening to the song, providing the right thing for the song. And again, you know, it can go down to the most basic thing that when you do get that session from these contacts. And of course, as, as I went on, I met more, um, how, how do we say, more connected people, um, famous people um, who liked what I did. And, and it sort of all moved on from there, really, from the first contact with, um, first contact, it sounds like alien, um, but the first big uh, ex sort of rock star contact, though he's still a rock star, was Hugh Cornwell from The Stranglers. That was my first contact uh, through a band I was in called The Deep Six. And we became his his backing band and also his support band for um, a project called CCW, Cornwall Cook and West, which I know I've spoken about before, so I've tried to repeat myself. That's on a video. If you go back into the early days of my YouTube channel, you'll see me talking about that. You know, so doing a good job there, making sure that I knew, you know, where the studio was, <laughs> what time I had to be there, you know, what material we were playing, getting any of that music beforehand so I could make charts, all that kind of thing. You know, it, it, it seems like it's not that important. We concentrate on the playing. Obviously, that's really important. But all the other stuff, you know, making sure I bring the right kind of snare drum, the right cymbals. And, and if I've only got the one snare, I, I bring that with some spare heads, you know, and, and maybe I've worked on my snare so I can tune it a few different ways. So I can maybe get a few different sounds from it. And if, if the sound isn't the one for the track from my snare drum, then I'll use a studio one, things like that. You know, just, just knowing your craft, really, and um, 
being professional about turning up, rem remembering a drum mat, you know, your carpet and uh, a music stand if you need one. They're most studios have got music stands but just all these little things they seem small but really if you if you come with all that and then you can play well that's an extra <laughs> you know that's a really good thing rather than you know rob's a good player but he's always late you know he doesn't learn the music uh he doesn't write the charts out um he brings the wrong gear um he doesn't know where we are he only asks on the morning of the session where we're going to be you know i mean that's pushing it a bit but you know what i mean it's that sort of stuff just being professional, really, really important. You know, and also um, communication once you're in the room, being able to communicate well with the other musicians, or if you're just tracking with an engineer and it's, you're just putting drums on top of the music, you know, getting a good rapport with him or her, making sure that works well. You know, all those things are just really important. Just being a, you know, a good person, somebody that people want to work with time and time again. That That's how I've done it. And of, and of course, working on my playing throughout all the years, practicing and um, honing my craft or our craft that's what it's about also listening to a lot of music you know um, here and on my laptop just listening to what's going on now and also in the past you know and all the bits in between <laughs> listening and uh, being um, you know open and receptive to all this kind of stuff especially for the studio it's just extremely important you know um, and another question that came in that flew in was about the, I said about the, my 60s kit um, and the DW kit. And someone on Instagram asked, you know, surely the, the, the Ludwig kit and vintage kits, people say are better than modern kits, you know, because they're weathered and old and the wood is, is you know, is um, maturing nicely, a bit like me. <laughs> um, well, maybe not me, but. And yeah, I mean, I've done a video on the vintage and modern thing. Um, sometimes you can get a vintage kit and my, my Super Classic is a lovely kit. The 13 is a bit funky with its shape, but it's OK. You know, it plays well, but the tunability of the 13 isn't as good as the 13 on my um, DW kit, for instance. I can do more with that 13 than I can that one. The fact that they're sort of 40 years or 50 years apart. Well, yeah, it was made in the 60s. The an amazing era for popular music and commercial music, pop music. But um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a better drum. And of course, looking at my modern one, made all the, the best quality wood, you know, the, 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 the bearing edges, everything's brilliant, the metal work uh, and, the, and the wrap and everything is brilliant, much better than a 60s drum. But does it mean it's better than a 60s drum? Not necessarily. It always comes down, I find, to what's going to sound good on the track. And I'm fortunate enough to have a vehicle which I can take maybe two or three drum kits if I'm clever how I pack it, um, how I load the van, uh, well, car. Um, I can get those amount of drums in. So if I'm on a session, I can pick and choose what I need. But, you know, that there is no real rule about um, it's an old sounding session, so I need the old kit. It doesn't always work that way. And, and honestly, I've found that out at local studios, um, and, and people's houses when I've recorded at their houses and stuff with just a basic mic setup. And also through, you know, thousands of pounds worth of equipment at real world studios, you know, Peter Gabriel's place, which is just down the road from me, you know, and um, it, it just because it's an old kit doesn't mean it's going to sound good on this project, even if the, the songwriter or, or if it's the engineer or the manager thinks, oh, it's got to be a drummer with a vintage kit. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't always work that way. That's not always the, the case. So, you know, having um, being open minded and having a good ear and just thinking, well, actually, the new one, the DW kit is going to sound better on this. You know, trust me, but I'll bring, bring both for an A and a B. But I'm telling you, this is going to be the better option. You know, that, that that's kind of a good thing. So if you've got um, a really good 60s or 50s drum kit or 70s drum kit and it sounds great on microphones and live, because if it sounds good live in a room, it's going to sound good with mics in it, then you can use that, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. That's going to, that could be the main kit that you use for everything that you do, even all the modern music. But the 60s kit that I've got, as I say, it's got its limitations. So for me, I like to sort of cross pollinate or pick one over the other, but I've got both sounds there if I need it, you know. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's options, having different colours and contrast to add to the track. I think that's really important. Um, so I hope that kind of clears that up. It's not one's better than the other. It's just what's needed for the song. And another question I got along the same lines, which I kind of have covered before, but there's so many videos now that <laughs> I can't remember which one it was in my 
collection of stuff, but um, it was, you know, preparation. So I've mentioned already about obvious preparation, like the studio, where it is, what gear I think I might need, take the bit of vintage, bit of modern, um, but it's, it's the material, you know, getting ready for the material, that kind of prep. So just getting the music beforehand, you know, and if it's chart stuff, um, sight reading, I'll ask to get copies of that beforehand because I can sight read, but I'm not mega confident. You know, I'm not the sort of drummer that could rock up to a show tonight and just play it. I, I, I could probably blag my way through it but um, and use my ear as well, but I'm not confident. There's some other guys, you know, good colleagues, friends of mine in this area that could just do that in their sleep. And that, that's really not my bag, as they say. Um, but yeah, if there's charts, I'll try to get them early so I can go through them. But more importantly, I want to hear the music. I want to hear an MP3 of the tracks or if they send me a tape or whatever. Um, I want to hear it <clears throat> so I can sort of climatize myself to what's going on. And if there's charts, I can read the charts and get into that. Or if I'm making my own, I can sit there and make my own. And then after that, you know, a little point I could add into this, which again, I may have said it before, but... Another thing you can do is put your own at the bottom of the music. I can make my own notes of what I think could work. So I'll write out the machine part. If there's no machine part, they haven't programmed any drums. I said, it's up to you either way. But if there's a machine part, I'll write that and say, well, this was the thing you uh, programmed. Um, and this is just a few ideas that I've got that might work, you know, bass drum wise or snare, hi-hat, whatever's going on. A few little things that I could add to it or we could take away or, or I think this pattern's really good. Let's just play it that pattern you've programmed, it works absolutely fine. You know, but, but that kind of thing is good because it shows that you've you've put some thought into their music and not only, you know, written it out, obviously, because that saves time on the day. Everyone's sitting there, you know, writing it out. It's okay, if, but still, it's nice if you've done it before you get there because it shows that, you know, you're you're into what they're doing and, and you're investing your time um, as, as, as much as they're investing their money and their faith in you. So, you know, doing that beforehand is really good. Plus having those little options. Um, and if you've got some musical ideas, uh, drum-wise, you know, obviously you can add those in. Um, if you can hear, maybe there could be a stop in the drum part at some point or a half-time thing or something like that. That's totally okay to, 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 to mention at the right time, you know, if it comes around to it. But you don't want to go in with this, like, I want to reinvent your song type idea because there are horror stories of musicians doing that. You know, you don't want to be too heavy with that. But if, if the chance comes up that you can just make your point, then I think that's a good thing. Um, you might get a credit at some point, which is good. Uh, getting credits on a, on tracks is good. If you're part of the songwriting process, you know, that means more revenue for you later on. Um, but yeah, that sort of stuff is um, is, is all, 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 all up for grabs. It's all good. But again, it's how you present that. So um, that's an important thing to remember. So just having that prep and stuff is is just very, very useful. Um, and now some of that I've answered before, I know, um, but you know, they're questions that came in again and I'm sure I get them again. Uh, I try not to answer them too often, but I don't, hopefully not all of what I talked about today was what, what I've talked about before in the past. But as I say, from last week's video with all the, vi the, the pictures and stuff of the sessions and stuff I was talking about, people were just asking many questions and so on. And then also I had a few about microphones. So I'm going to do a bit of research, talk to Steve and stuff, just to remember what microphones he put on the kit because he had a whole load of vintage stuff that I don't usually use. Um, so I'll be able to answer that some uh, for you, maybe in a midweek video or something at some point. But again, thanks for the questions. Thanks for them coming in. It keeps me busy. Um, I'm busy again at the moment and uh, going into rehearsal soon with somebody that I, I hope I can share um, the info and news with with you soon. I'm hoping I could do that. Um, but there you go. I hope that answers the questions. Uh, have a good Friday. If you gig in this weekend, go out and do your thing. Have fun. And uh, I'll see you on Tuesday for the regular Tuesday video. Keep liking and subscribing. Please keep sharing the videos. Um, that's it. I'm done. Take care, guys. See you soon. Cheers.